Hi there. I'm going to stall for a few minutes while I see who's all going to get on here. Hi. Uh oh. That was my finger because somebody just text messaged me. So, today, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I've been saying I wanted to do a video about prosperity gospel versus poverty gospel and I just haven't been up to doing it. I've been so busy because my husband just retired and um, it's it's time consuming because it's like my business is on a wild spin of getting things ready for this retirement so I haven't been able to do this video so I apologize to you. And I have no idea how long this video will go because sometimes I get a little bit crazy and I go on rabbit trails. <laughs> so, um, I don't know what you believe, but I know that we all believe what we believe because somebody taught it to us. And somebody taught it to us because either they experienced it or they didn't experience it. Usually when people uh, are against the prosperity gospel, it's because they're poor and they have to work really hard or when somebody is against the healing part of the gospel it's and they say it's not for today or it's not for everybody is because they had a bad experience so that's the same thing that kind of happens with the prosperity gospel um, somebody had a bad experience somebody wasn't successful and so they taught it to that next person and the next person and the next person but the gospel is, is not something that if you, if it says it in the word and you don't experience it, you can't change the message to what your experience is. You have to change your experience to what the message is, okay? So with the prosperity gospel, a lot of people just get totally angry. I should say a lot of religious people get angry because one of the stupid things that people say who don't believe that God wants us to prosper is, well, look at this big mansion that you live in and there's poor children over in Africa that have no food. Well, that's totally irrelevant. Jesus said you would always have the poor with you. Okay, because in order to prosper, you have to sow and you have to reap. And if you're not sowing and if you're not, you're not going to be reaping. You're always sowing. You're either sowing negative or positive. You're, you're, you're always sowing and you're always going to reap from what you sow. So you got to figure out what are you sowing um, so because of what you are reaping. And when it comes to prosperity, it, it's a very touchy situation because people get very angry about it. And in this video, I'm not talking about tithing. That's, that's not something I'm talking about. I'm just talking about prospering. I'm talking about being successful. I'm talking about money. I'm talking about abundance and overflow. And a lot of people think that, oh, you're wasteful. Okay. So what God showed me, I came from a background of poverty. I have fought the poverty mentality for years. I knew God wanted me to prosper, but I wasn't prospering because I had this mindset of, oh, the poor children in Africa, I'm responsible for them. And because I, I, if I lived in this big mansion, then I'm responsible for these kids who have these emasinate, whatever that word is, these, this body that is disintegrating because they don't get fed. It's my responsibility. And that's, that's, that's the devil taking it and twisting it around because your responsibility is to make so much money and to prosper so much that you can get everything that makes you a good representative of God and have all the tools you need for your ministry, your business, what God's called you to do, your life of living like a king, that you could turn around and you can give to other people that you can sow seeds into those places that don't have water or don't have food or even into your own local community or into your brothers and sisters you have abundance that you can sow so anyway so that's where I came from that's the poverty spirit that I have been fighting and so I wanted to just say hi to Jean and Lisa and Faith and Gregory and some of you others that are watching hello <laughs> And if you like this video, share it with your social media site and your people. But just last week, knowing that my husband was going to retire, okay, so that meant that we weren't going to, weren't going to have thousands of dollars coming in each month. That meant that somehow we were going to 
have to make money and the stress of that and not I, I did not want my husband to come home from driving an hour and a half to work and an hour and a half back and come home and and retire and then have to go out and get another job because it's time for us to do things we haven't done before and I have a business as an author I have a, uh, I publish books promote books get reviews from my authors build websites and help them build platforms and all that stuff but I'm also a ventriloquist and I'm about the only ventriloquist in Tulsa and I have 24 years experience being on stage and entertaining and and so forth so I figure I can take my businesses and I can expand them and explode them and um, thinking those thoughts put a lot of pressure on me and thinking oh he's retiring and I'm refiring I'm gonna have to do all this work and I was getting stressful and and God reminded me um, of the prosperity that he wants for us and these are some of the things he told me in that situation first of all he said that man is created in the image of God and therefore man has the same now before the fall has the same emotional needs and the same emotions as God does because we're created in his image that man has the same um, physical needs or the same physical things that God enjoys man enjoys in other words earth is a copy of heaven heaven is a planet that has streets for traveling it has houses for living in it has people that you recognize and earth is the copy of that even though everything has fallen the colors and the colors and sounds and our thoughts feelings emotions and the way we treat each other is different since the fall we were created in the image of God so number one let's take a look at the image of God okay God showed me he says that he has streets of gold in heaven well isn't that wasteful having streets of gold why would we want streets of gold what benefit is that that is like over abundance why would we have streets of gold because God is a God of lavishness abundance supernatural he made the gold he told Adam and Eve where the gold was in the garden why did he tell them that because he knew that it would prosper them he didn't tell them where the dirt was he didn't tell them he told them where valuable things were he told them where the gold was why did they need to know that because gold was valuable it would prosper them okay so they have streets made out of gold in heaven they have mansions in heaven I always said God I love tiny houses I live in a tiny house I'm we're building a tiny house I love tiny houses why do I want a mansion it's like over the top it's too much well why do I like tiny houses you don't have to clean it there's you can go run the vacuum cleaner from one end of the house to the other end of the house without unplugging it how cool is that okay you have less money you have to spend and make to air condition it you have less money you have to make and earn to heat it so I don't have those problems in heaven I don't have to clean my house I don't have to heat it I don't have to air condition it so why would I not want a mansion in heaven we're thinking too small tiny house is comfortable and cozy and you get in the corners and stuff but in reality the reason I like tiny houses because they look really cool is you don't have to clean them as much you don't have to heat them and air condition there's less money you have to make <laughs> And I only use one room. I don't have lots of people. It's just me and my husband and two dogs and two cats and all the angels. So looking at it from that point of view, earth is a copy of heaven. God wants us to prosper on earth like it is in heaven. He has mansions. He has streets of gold. He has waterfalls. He has trees of that are alive that heal people that are for health and healing. Um, he has waters rivers of living water flow out from under the throne rivers of living water flow out from us for healing for uh, the representative of the Holy Spirit so you see we're creating his image and his likeness and so if God is living in luxury and prosperity on earth I mean in heaven and we're his kids and the king it's a kingdom it's a kingdom it's a dominion and any king should have the best of everything why should the wicked people have the best of everything they're not they're not yet God's kids we're God's kids we should have preferential treatment we should have favor we should have prosperity we should have abundance and get it out of your head that it's wrong for you to prosper while your neighbor is poor they are poor 
for a reason. You reap what you sow. That's why I'm sowing three packages that are $399 each because I'm, a, I'm a in business and I create publishing packages. So I, I, I give away what I can do. And I'm sowing seeds. So I'm sowing over $1,200 worth of seeds because I have a need. That's why I'm getting more business. That's why I'm prospering because I'm sowing seeds. So why would my neighbor who is poor give me, create a mindset in me that says I can't prosper because my neighbor is poor? That is the wrong mindset. And that's what we have to get over. That we have to have a mindset. We are God's kids. We should look the best, have the best. If there is the best out there, it belongs to us. Okay. And what do we do with that? First of all, we take care of our families. We take care of ourselves. And then we should have so much abundance that we can take them and bless other people. But if you keep blessing your poor neighbor, all you're going to do is feed him and he's going to become dependent upon you. And what you need to do is teach him how to sow. Give him, give him two bags of groceries and tell him to give away half of one bag. If, they, if, you, if somebody does not sow, they're not going to reap. This is the principle of the kingdom. It's backwards from the world system. The world system says get as much as you can, step on people's toes, lie, cheat, steal, and then you will prosper in business. God's word says you reap what you sow. Give away things. Bless people. Okay? If you're in need, plant a seed. So you can prosper and your neighbor can be poor. You can give them something to help them once in a while, but they're going to stay poor unless you teach them to give and to sow. Okay, that's the number one principle of prosperity in the in the kingdom. I have given away air, uh, airplanes. Yeah, right. I have given away uh, cars. I have been given cars. Someday I'm going to give away a house. I think we've given away around three vehicles so far. I've given away clothing and furniture and and three hundred, four hundred dollars ventriloquist shows. Um, publishing package I sow so that I can reap I not only want the best tools to bless the people I minister to and to bless the people in my uh, with my business I, I need tools to be the best I need my ventriloquist tools I need sound systems I need uh, my puppets in excellent condition I need my car working in excellent... I can't drive up in a jalopy that backs, backfires. I'm charging you $400 to do a ventriloquist show. And I pull out of the... Uh, uh, into your uh, church parking lot or your house to do a birthday party show. And I'm dressed terribly. And my shoes are torn. And my car is backfiring. That's not a good representative of God. I want to have excellence in my life and in my ministry. And if I don't have excellence, I can't give away excellence. And the same with you. You might not have a business or a ministry, but you're God's representative. And you shouldn't look like a bum on the street unless you're going out to minister to bums on the street on purpose. You should look your best, but be you. Like I wear blue jeans and, and <laughs> I wear blue jeans everywhere, but I wear sexy blue jeans. I wear nice blue jeans. Either torn up because that's the style and I like that but I wear sneakers everywhere and that's my style I, I hate dressing up in high heels so I dress up with earrings and my hair and glasses and stuff so I want to be God's representative and I need excellence in my ministry I need excellence in my home I need excellence in what I do because I'm God's representative so I have to have the mindset that I want to be the best that I can be and each step along the way takes me higher. Um, like this house is not done yet. Uh, we're still living in a shell because we're building a house over there and putting the money in over there. But when we put the money in over there, it's going to go to a higher level than this house. We're going to have thicker insulation. We're going to have nicer cupboards, nicer this, nicer that. And it's not necessarily that we will go out and have, buy it. We can pray it in. We can sow a seed. Somebody can give it to us. We can go to a used place and get it. So you use what you have available to you and you keep getting better at what you have and what you, what you give. You can only give um, what you have. I want to tell you an example of my pastor. My pastor 
um, she's not really my pastor anymore, but she used to be my pastor. She's more like my friend. But she would go into her own house and take pictures off the wall and sow a seed to somebody. She would bake a cake. She's an excellent cook. She would bake a cake and sow a seed when they had a need in their church or in their home. And you can do that too. It doesn't matter how you have to sow a seed where you're at. Okay. So anyway, so we're create. I got sidetracked there. We're created in the image of God, and um, God is a giver and a lover, and and that's how we um, we sow, and we should expect to have receive receive. You don't go outside and dig up the ground and plant a pumpkin seed and not take care of it and not expect a pumpkin to come out of a seed. A seed creates the tree that creates the fruit that has more seeds, that has more fruit, has more seeds, and has more trees in it. When you plant a seed, you look for and you expect the harvest. Don't just give randomly and don't just give. Give with the intention of receiving, not from that person, but from God. Because when you give with as a seed with the intent to receive, don't have the mindset that um, I, I, if I give with the intent to receive, I'm just manipulating the system or I'm just being selfish. No, this is a system that God set up. He said, give. You will have abundance. You will have overflow. You will have more than enough. The goal is to have more than enough, to have not just your needs met, but your heart's desire met to met met so you can sow into other people's lives it's abundance in every area of your life if you don't have abundance you can't give abundance so start where you're at and keep going higher and higher and higher uh, and giving what you what you got so into other people's lives and ministries people that feed you uh, people that bless you so into their ministry so in, so into your neighbor or someone okay so um, Jesus became poor through so that through us through his poverty might be made rich now that is new testament covenant promise now when you say jesus became poor he became poor by heaven's standards a lot of people will say oh see jesus became poor so you should want to be poor too and when it says that he so you would become rich it would be like so you would become rich spiritually ab baloney that's a lie uh, this, something that the devil just tries to twist and distort. Okay, first of all, Jesus became poor. He had everything available in heaven. When he came to earth, he lived as a man in man's fallen world with man's fallen resources. So he had to sow in order to reap. He had everything available to him. He knew how to work the system. And he did work the system. Okay? He had Peter, he had Peter go and fish. He had Peter fish pull out a coin out of the fish's mouth and he didn't just pay money for his taxes he paid he sowed seeds into Peter by paying for Peter's taxes so he sowed okay so he sowed okay so um, Jesus became poor people say see Jesus is poor you shouldn't be you shouldn't want to be rich poverty is next to godliness that's not in the scripture that's a lie of the enemy um, <clears throat> Jesus became poor okay so think of this Jesus had a treasury how many of you have a treasury Jesus was so rich that he had a treasury because people were giving to him people were sowing into his ministry and he had to have a treasure and uh, Judas was stealing from it and it didn't matter that Jewish Judas was stealing from it they had abundance of money that it didn't even matter that Judas was stealing from it okay so number one he had a treasure you only have a treasure when you're rich and you have stuff to treasure okay so he was rich Number two is he had a house and invited guests to come home with him. A big enough house to have guests. Debt-free house, okay? When they say he had nowhere to lay his head, they're talking about the head is the authority, the dominion. He couldn't, he could only transfer dominion to man to a certain point because they didn't, they weren't born again yet till after he died. They didn't become born again and they couldn't have that authority. They just had temporary authority uh, delegated to them while he was alive. Um, so he had a house okay he had a purple robe a purple robe his robe was royalty that it was so good that the guards didn't even want to tear it because it was so good they gambled for it and they got it so it's so good his um his his clothing was so good that they gambled to win his clothing how awesome is that okay so 
you can't argue and say that Jesus became poor, that through his poverty we would be made rich, that Jesus was poor according to heaven's standards. He was poor because he came from heaven and they had the standard of richness and he came and lived as a man under everything that man was living under. Okay, and, and Galatians 3.13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. And if you go and look at Deuteronomy 28, that is one of my favorite places to go because... Deuteronomy 28 tells you the curses. I love, love, love reading about the curses because it tells you everything you're not. It, it says that you will be in fear for searching, that your eyes will grow dim. Well, I'm believing for healing for my eyes. I'm believing for new eyes, so I don't have to wear glasses. My youth is renewed. So <clears throat> you can look at the curses and everything in the curses. It says, one of the things it says, des desiring and having nothing. Uh, having want of all things. So if you have want of all things, you're under the curse. And Jesus redeemed you from the curse. So how cool is that? Um, now, uh, look at Deuteronomy 28. Go through the curses and take the curses and say, Hey, I'm redeemed from this. And, and believe in that. <clears throat> it also says that, uh, that you would have storehouses in Deuteronomy 28. It talks about storehouses. Well, some of us, our money comes in and it goes right out. There's no storehouses for us. It's just a traveling uh, money comes in and money goes out. So storehouses, we're supposed to have stuff stored up. We're supposed to have enough food. We're supposed to have enough money. We're supposed to be able to get our clothing. Our business is supposed to have what it needs. Always be ahead, not behind. So our mentality has to change. Um, Deuteronomy 29, it says that their clothing and shoes ha haven't even worn out. How many of us have to buy new clothing because it wears out all the time? Okay, so we should have the finances or the ability or the gift or whatever of clothing. So, so hi Angela. So, when you, clothing stores, they should, they're a blessing. You should be able to afford clothing stores. You know, they're a blessing. Okay, the other thing uh, <clears throat> that he showed me is in... Deuteronomy, oh, well, let's see, where is it? Um, okay, yes, Deuteronomy 8, 7. I want to read that to you. That is an awesome scripture that a lot of people skip by. Deuteronomy 8. Uh, this is really a cool scripture. I love this scripture. This is a list of everything that a king should have. And you're a king. Okay, Deuteronomy. Uh, okay, first let's look at Deuteronomy uh, 6, 6, 10. It says, so it should be when the Lord your God has brought you into the land which he swore to your fathers and gave you large and beautiful cities that you did not build, houses full of all good things, uh oh my light tilts it, houses full of all good things which you did not fill, hewed out wells which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant. And when you're eaten in full, then you're supposed to give God praise for all that. Okay, so that's how we're supposed to be living. Okay, so let's go to Deuteronomy 8. It says, The Lord your God will bring you into a good land with brooks of water and fountains and springs and flowing valleys and hills. A land with wheat and barley, figs and pomegranate. Okay, abundance of everything. Olive oil, olive oil, honey, bread without scarcity, which you will lack nothing. That's pretty cool. Uh, a land with iron and stones that you can dig copper a good land and after you have eaten and are full and built beautiful houses and dwell in them and have herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold silver and gold silver and gold prosperity multiply and all that you have multiplies and then it starts saying that you were in bondage before and now you're not and you should remember to thank God as you go down it says and your God shall re and you shall remember that your God the Lord your God for it is he that gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant okay so our covenant is a covenant of prosperity abundance overflow more than enough and if you want to have three cars that's fine because if you're using your cars to bless somebody let them borrow it or you need it for this or that you don't have to justify yourself. It's between you and God. Okay? People get annoyed with the preachers like Creflo Dollar or Kenneth Copeland that has three or four jets or whatever. Who cares? Mind your own business. They have sown 
airplanes to people and cars to people and thousands of dollars. They have obeyed God. That's why they're prosperous. Anybody who is a Christian is and sowing is prosperous because they are sowing so into people's ministries, into people's lives. But remember, if you sow into the poor, God will repay. But that person's belly will only be filled for that day or that time. You need to teach them the principles of the kingdom, sowing and reaping. So anyway, um, that's all I wanted to share with you on that. But I do want to share with you, I'm working on some new books. These are, I have uh, four books out on angels and most of them went to the best-selling list for quite a while. I have um, three more. Let me get my picture here. Hang on a second. Look at the back of my head. Here's a picture. Yes, I'm working on these three books. The Holy, the Holy Spirit. I was debating I was going to do these as children's books, but you know what? There's a lot of adults that don't know about the Holy Spirit, don't know about the power of praise, and don't know about um, healing. So I'm going to be doing those three angel books. I'm going to be working on them. Uh, to keep this God told me today specifically that these books were very successful with you know the pictures of the angels in the sky were very successful and he wants me to continue that series plus I'm also working on um, a book about uh, the courts of heaven and the kingdom of God together how they work together and I'm not sure when that will be done uh, which is a really cool book but anyway uh, my books are all on Amazon most of them except for my angel books are free if you get Kindle Unlimited and all of them are on um, on Kindle, except for my only one angel book because they're really hard and time-consuming uh, to get on Kindle. Um, so you can get those. But also I wanted to let you know that um, I have a lot of services. If you are an author, I will promote your book. I will I can enhance your Kindle, Kingdom description. I get reviews for you. Uh, do all kinds of work for you. Help you build a, a, a author, a paid... Uh, website and also now do Facebook uh, profiles and Facebook business page I create um, those platforms for you create the buttons and stuff um, as an author uh, so so check that out so if you know of anybody that is an author or wants to be an author I am still giving away two more um, publishing uh, uh, kits per, per, you know publishing packets that's the right words and the publishing packet is uh, $300 right now, but as of September 1st, it's going up to $399. Um, it, actually, other people do the same thing for $1,000 and up to $10,000. So God told me that this is the price that I'm to offer for now. But the publishing packet, which they're going to get for $399, two more people. I already gave away one to Lindsay L. Williams. I have two more I'm giving away. All you have to do is put your name under the original post uh, on the fact that I'm giving them away on that post. But <clears throat> what they include is uh, I will open up all your accounts. I'll publish your book on Creative Space. Create a spine, front and back, uh, professional book cover. I will um, upload all the information. Get your ISBN number. Format your book for Kindle and format your book for a print book. And then you order a proof. When you, you approve everything, you order a proof. And then I publish it for you. And you have a Kindle book and a print book that is sold worldwide on Amazon. And that's uh, $300 right now until September 1st. So you better get in. If you want to buy it, you better buy it before September 1st because it's going up to $399, which is still a very, very low price. Um, and I also opened up your Author Central account uh, where um, as you publish more books, uh, you would have them central there. Uh, book, writing books is like potato chips. You can't just stop with one. Uh, so anyway, so... You can get in on that and get a free publishing packet if you're one. I just pray and get a name, and then I look for that person. I look for that name, and they're the ones. So next week, probably Monday or Tuesday, I'll be giving away the second $399 publishing packet because I am sowing seeds because I need for my business because this is what we're doing. Alan and me, Alan has retired, and Alan and me are working businesses from home. So he's going to do, um, oh, that's a new service I'm offering. He is going to read your book. And make it into an audiobook. I have 13 audiobooks right now out of my four dozen books that I've written. And he is going to make some for me and as to show you what he does. But he, he will do audiobooks for you. So he's doing audiobooks. He's creating jingles. He's, uh, uh, if you have a favorite scripture, he will put it to music. Uh, if you have um, a, script, a, a poem or a song that you've written, uh, he will he will 
create the music for it. And so that's what he's going to do. He's, he's uh, going to use his awesome voice. And he's going to also help me with my publishing business. And he is my taxi driver, so I don't have stress. So when I go do my ventriloquist shows all over the churches in Tulsa, Fort Worth, Arkansas, and Missouri, and I do anti-bullying shows uh, as a ventriloquist and um, birthday shows and all kinds of event shows for non-Christian events all over the four-hour drive in these four states. Um, he's my taxi driver. So that's why I'm sowing seeds because I need some tools for my businesses. Um, we get a big check because he's retiring, but we don't get it till after August 15th. And so between, he just got his last paycheck today that has to, so our business has to feed us and pay bills between now and September 15th. So I am sowing these seeds. <laughs> uh, uh, so this is what we're doing. So keep a, agree with us in prayer that we will prosper in our businesses that we're doing and um, that I can bless my authors because I, I just want to have the best tools available to get their books to number one. I've been able to get six people's books up to number one in one day plus my own. Plus I've been able to get about ten of my books up to the number one spot uh, on Amazon <clears throat> consistently. Um, so anyway, so just want to bless you guys. I hope that helps. I hope I hope that you are blessed and you get out of that mind mentality and you know it takes work it takes work to get out of that mentality like oh it's my fault my neighbor's poor so I shouldn't shouldn't show him up by having a nice car because he's poor and I'm not you know get over that mentality it's between you and God nobody else and he wants you rich he wants you prosperous he wants you blessed he wants you to have abundance so have a blessed day my website is robinbremer.net if you are looking for a ventriloquist uh, or um a comic ventriloquist that teaches anti-bullying to adults, corporations, whatever. My website then is uh, Rockin' Robin. I'm Rockin' Robin. <laughs> Rockin' Robin Live.com, and it'll take you to Gig Salad, which is where I book all of my um, ventriloquism through. So, have a blessed day. Be prosperous. Um, isn't that something to say that uh, Spark does something like this? Spark does something like this on Star Trek and says, prosperous and be well or something anyway okay talk to y'all later love you be blessed share my videos bye